Is this thing on? It's time for Laughs with Mr. Thomas. Here we go, chapter five, lesson number two, binomial coefficients. Now to introduce this, I want you to imagine a bench, not a big bench, just a wee bench, big enough for two people. However, dun dun dun, let's say there are four people that want to sit down. Let's call them Astrid, Bonnie, Clark and David. Hi everybody. How many ways can two people be selected from this group of four to sit on the bench? Now I'm sure you could work out that sitting on the bench. You could have Astrid and Bonnie. Or you could have Astrid and Clark. Or Astrid and David. Or Bonnie and Clark. Or Bonnie and David. Or Clark and David. Either way, I'm sure you've worked out that there are six different ways to select two people from the group of four. When we are selecting our objects from a list of n objects, in maths we can express that as what is known as a binomial coefficient. Woo! And the binomial coefficients you write in one of two ways. You can either write a binomial coefficient as n on the top and r on the bottom inside brackets. Remember n is how many objects you have and you want to choose r objects. Or you can write it as a capital C with an N up here, the number of objects you have, and an R down here, the number you want to choose. This is read as dun, 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 N choose R. And N choose R is calculated using this formula. So N choose R you can write as one of two ways. And you work it out by N factorial over R factorial and in brackets, n minus r factorial. Remember, n is how many objects you have, and r is the number that you want to choose. So, for this example here with the wee bench, the four people choosing two, you can write that as four choose two. Remember, n is four, so you've got a four at the top and a two at the bottom, because two is how many you're choosing, or you can write it as four choose two. If you worked that out, well, you could have the formula, which is n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. So, that is 4 factorial over 2 factorial, and in brackets, n minus r is 4 minus 2 factorial. Well, 4 take away 2 is obviously 2, so let's write that as just 2 factorial. So we end up with 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial. What do factorials mean? Helps out, Danielle. Perfect. It means you're multiplying that number by all the numbers before it all the way down to 1. So 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But if we can write that in terms of 2 factorial, we could cancel a 2 from the top and the bottom. So let's do that. 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times all the number before that. So that can be used 2 factorial. And that gives us 2 factorial up here and down here. Meaning then, what do we do? Cancel! Perfect, so we can cancel out the 2 factorial at the top and the bottom. We're multiplying 2 by 2 factorial and we're dividing by it. So that will cancel. Leaving us with 4 times 3 in the top and in the bottom we'd have a 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, giving you an answer of 6. There are another couple of properties which we will look at in some of the later examples, but to give you them now, n choose r is equal to n choose n minus r and n choose r minus 1 add on n choose r is equal to n plus 1 choose r and we will look at these in some of the later examples but just now example 1 let's start with one of the basic examples calculate 6 choose 3 so six, it means you've got a group of six objects and you want to find out how many ways you can choose three. So you write that as six choose three or you can write it just with brackets. Six is the value of n, three is the value of r. Plugging that into this formula that is up here, that becomes six factorial over three factorial and in brackets you have six take away three factorial. Perfect, that is what you would have. 6 take away 3 is obviously 3, so that becomes 6 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial. But 6 factorial, you can write as 6 
times 5 times 4 times 3 times the numbers before that. So it's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And doing that gives us the 3 factorial at the top. Hello. And at the bottom, hello. Which means you can cancel them out, leaving you with 6 times 5 times 4 on the top and then the bottom 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. And if you multiply these numbers at the top, you get 120. At the bottom, you get 6, giving you an answer of dun, 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 20. You could also have cancelled here as well, because 6 is the same as the 3 times 2. So you could also have cancelled them out and cancelled the 6, leaving you with 5 times 4, which is 20, over 1, which would again give you this answer just here. Look at the answer. Yeah. It would have been the same. You can choose which way you want to do it. Example two, calculate seven, choose five. Now we know seven, choose five is going to be the same as writing it in brackets with a seven and a five. So we're replacing n with seven, r with five, meaning then n factorial is seven factorial. At the bottom, r factorial is five factorial. And in the brackets, we would have seven take away five and then factorial. 7 take away 5 is 2, so let's write that as 7 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial. Remember, 7 factorial means 7 times 6 times all the numbers before that, so we could write it as 7 times 6 times 5, and rather than continuing in writing times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1, we could leave that as 5 factorial. And the whole point in doing that would be, Max, perfect, you get the 5 factorial at the top, and at the bottom. And when you have it at the top and the bottom, Max, what can you do? You can cancel. Yes, you can cancel them out. Perfect. Leaving you then with 7 times 6 at the top. At the bottom, 2 factorials, just 2 times 1. Meaning you would get 42 divided by 2, which is 21. Woo! Example 3. How many ways can 3 dogs woof, be chosen from a group of 5? So this time, the group... Number is 5, so we're starting with 5, and we want to choose 3. So we can write that one of two ways. Either way, we're going to sub these numbers into this formula just here. n is the number that we have. We have 5, so that becomes 5 factorial. We are choosing 3, so that is over 3 factorial. And in the brackets, n take away r is going to be 5 take away 3. And that will also be factorial. 5 Take away 3 is obviously 2, so let's write that. And then 5 factorials, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But let's stop at 3 factorial, because then again we get the same factorial at the top and the bottom. So they will cancel. Leaving us with, on the top, 5 times 4, and on the bottom, 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. That will give us 20 over 2, which is 10. So there are 10 ways of choosing 3 dogs from a group of five. Example four, find the number of ways of selecting four teams from a group of 10. So we have 10 teams, we want to choose four. The way we write that then, well, because N is the number of teams we have, which will be 10, we will have 10 factorial. We are wanting to choose four, so that is over four factorial. And in brackets, we'd have 10 take away four, then factorial. 10 take away 4 is 6, so that becomes 10 factorial over 4 factorial, 6 factorial. 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But we could stop at 6 factorial because it gives us a 6 factorial at the top and the bottom. Woo! So you could cancel them out. You could do more cancelling or you could just start working that out. If you work it out, well, it just becomes 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, 4 factorials, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That will give us 5,040 over 24, which is 210. Yo! Example 5. In a lottery, 6 numbered balls are chosen from a set of 49. Calculate the probability of matching all 6 numbers and winning the jackpot. Yeah! So we have 49 and we want to choose 6, hopefully, the 6 winning numbers. We can write that one of two ways. Either way, if we work that out, 
n, the number we have is 49, so at the top we would have 49 factorial using this formula here. On the bottom we would have 6 factorial and then 49 take away 6 factorial. 49 take away 6 is 43, so it becomes 49 factorial over 6 factorial, 43 factorial. 49 factorials, 49 times 48 times 47 times all the numbers before that, all the way down to 1. But because we have a 43 factorial on the bottom, let's write 49 factorial in terms of 43 factorial. So that will become 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43 factorial. It's all the numbers before the 43. Because we are multiplying by 43 factorial and then dividing by 43 factorial, they will cancel. Meaning in the bottom, we would just be left with 6 factorial. That will then give us a number which we would have to use a calculator for. And dun, 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 if we put that into the calculator, it gives us 13,983,816,000,000. Meaning the chances of winning this lottery would be a 1 in 13,983,816 chance. Yeah. Example 6. Solve N choose 2 equals 15. So for this example, well, we are given the value of r, but we're not given the value of n, but we are told it is equal to 15. So how do we solve this one? Well, we know n choose 2. We could write this way here. We could write it as n factorial and then 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial. But we know it's equal to 15. What's the point in doing that? Well, if you think about it, n factorial means n times the number before that, which will be whatever n is, take away 1, times the number before that, which will be whatever n is, take away 2, times whatever n is, take away 3, and so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. But you could stop at n take away 2 factorial, because that will give you an n take away 2 factorial on the top and on the bottom, so they will cancel. So you will be left with, on the top, n times the n take away 1, and on the bottom, 2 factorial. Remember, 2 factorial means 2 times 1, and on the top, because you have n times n take away 1, you could just multiply out the brackets. That will give you n squared take away n over 2 equals 15. Where would you go from there, Malika? Help us out. Perfect, multiply both sides by 2 if you do that. You would get n squared take away n, and that would equal 30. Subtract 30 from both sides, and we are left with n squared take away n take away 30 equals 0. To solve that, Fatima, this is your moment. What would we do? Factorize. Perfect, you would factorize, so that will give you n take away 6 times n plus 5. Meaning then, the values you would have for n would be 6 and negative 5. However, remember n is the number of objects you have. You cannot have less than zero objects. It makes no sense. So, since n must be bigger than zero, n equals 6. Yeah! Example 7. Solve n choose 2 equals 28. So this time, once again, we are not told this value of n, but we are told what n choose 2 is equal to. Let's again use this formula. So n choose r is equal to n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. So subbing in these values, you would have n factorial over 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial. Again, n factorial means n times the number before that, n take away 1, times the number before that, n take away 2 times all the numbers before that, right the way down to 1. But if you think about it, because you have an n take away 2 factorial on the bottom, let's stop at n take away 2 factorial. And doing that will give us this multiply by n take away 2 factorial and a divide by n take away 2 factorial, meaning they will cancel. So on the top, we're left with n times n take away 1. On the bottom, we're left with 2 factorial, and that's still equal to 28. On the top, n times n take away 1 just means you're multiplying out the brackets, so that will give us n squared take away n, n times n, and then n times negative 1. If you then multiply both sides by 2, n squared take away n will equal 56, and if you subtract 56 from both sides, n squared take away n, take away 56, will equal 0. To solve that, what do you do? Factorize! 
You got it. Meaning then you will have n take away 8 times n plus 7. And the two values you have for n would be perfect 8 and negative 7. But think about it, you could easily have 8 objects, but you couldn't have negative 7 objects. It makes no sense. So the number of objects has to be bigger than 0, so n will equal 8. And that will be your answer. Example 8, using one of the properties, n choose r is equal to n choose n minus r. Find another way of writing 8 choose 3. So if we think about this, well, n is equal to 8, r is equal to 3. So that will be the same as, well, n is just staying the same. That is not changing, so that will be the same as keeping the 8 on the top. But on the bottom, we'd have an n take away r. Remember, n is 8, r is 3, so we'd have an 8 take away 3, which is 5. Which means then that 8 choose 3 is equal to 8 choose 5. Find another way of writing 20 choose 4. Well, again, the n just stays as it is. That's not changing. So the 20 will stay. But on the bottom, we have an n take away r. n in this case is 20. r is 4. So we'd have 20 take away 4, which is 16. So 20 choose 4 is equal to 20 choose 16. Find another way of writing 32 choose 21. Well, again, n is going to be 32. R is going to be 21, but the N stays as it is, so we still have 32. On the bottom, N take away R would be 32 take away 21, which is 11. So 32 choose 21 is equal to 32 choose 11. Example 9, using the property N choose R equals N choose N minus R, find the value of N if n choose n take away 2 equals 55. So the first thing we need to think is because we have an n choose n take away 2, well we know then using this property and going back the way, well you can see the n just stays as it is. So we'd still have an n at the top, but on the bottom because we have an n take away 2 here, well it means the value of r is going to be 2. So that will give us n choose 2. And we know that's equal to 55. Once we have it in this form, n choose 2, we could use this formula. That'll be n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. Replace r with 2, and that will give us n factorial over 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial. But Taking it further, n factorial is n times the number before that, times the number before that, times the number before that, and so on. And on the bottom, the n take away 2 factorial, well, if you write at the top the n take away 2 factorial, you can cancel them out. So cancel at n take away 2 factorial at the top and at the bottom. And that'll mean then, at the top, we'd have an n times n take away 1 over 2 factorial n times n take away 1, well n times n is n squared, n times negative 1 is take away n, so that is what we will have. From there, multiply both sides by 2, so n squared take away n equals 110. Subtract 110 from both sides, and we would have n squared take away n take away 110 equals 0, and then factorize in order to solve. So we'd have n take away 11 times n plus 10, and we will have two values for n. We will have 11 and negative 10. But remember, n is the number of objects you have. You cannot have negative 10 objects. That makes no sense. But we could have 11 objects. The number of objects you will have will be bigger than 0. So n must be 11. Example 10, using this property, n choose n minus r plus n choose r equals n plus 1 choose r using that Find the value of n if n choose 1 plus n choose 2 equals 28. Now for this one here, what you're doing first of all is you're thinking, right, well, what is that equal to? Well, we can see that if you have an n and then you're adding on n, that's going to be equal to the n plus 1 if we're just looking at what is at the top. So n and n, they are the same, so we're going to have an n plus 1. At the bottom, you've got an r takeaway 1 and an r, and then over here you would have r. 
So we're looking for some number and then the number before it. Well, in this case, we've got a two and then the number before that. But that will go to whatever R is. So in this case, R must be two. So you'd have an N plus one, choose two, and that's equal to the 28. N plus one, choose two, you could write using this formula. You can write that as N plus one factorial over two factorial and then N plus one take away two factorial. That will give us, well, N plus one take away two, you could simplify to N take away one factorial. N plus one factorial is N plus one times the number before that. Well, if you take one off that, you will have N. If you then multiply that by the number before it, you will have N take away one. And then if you keep on going down right the way to zero, well, you could just write that as n take away one factorial. And the reason you're leaving it as that is because you can then cancel. You've got an n take away one factorial at the top, and you've also got this n take away one factorial at the bottom. That means then at the top, we are left with this n plus one times n. On the bottom, we are left with two factorial, which is just two times one, and that equals 28. Multiply the top, well, you could write that as n bracket n plus one, which will give us n squared plus n over two equals 28. Multiply both sides by two and n squared plus n equals 56. Subtract 56 from both sides and n squared plus n take away 56 equals zero. To solve that, what do you do? You got it, you factorize. So n plus eight times n take away seven equals zero, meaning then that n is going to be negative eight or seven. However, just remember, n is the number of objects you have. You cannot have less than zero objects, so n must be seven in this example. Try some of these questions. You're looking at binomial coefficients and you're using the properties as well. In the unit two booklet, email me if you still need it, attempt pages three and four. Check your answers as you go. Best of luck, have fun, woo, bye.